Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part three of hidden, the hidden things of the Lord. Well, hide hidden. Uh, but um, I think this is going to be one of my last Bible studies. And I'm going, well, I've been thinking about writing a book for well over 20 years. Well, since the 90s. And uh, I think I'm going to do it. I've, I mean, I've already started. I've got a couple of chapters done. A few chapters. And uh, it'll basically be how uh, some of it's going to be my life experience some of it's going to be history some of it's going to be bible doctrines and kind of how i think things are going to play out for the end times and it's just i don't know it it you know not to be bragging or think i've been given any special wisdom but it seems like the education that i have received both from the School of Hard Knocks and formal education seems to be that uh, has been preparing me for what's coming. So I'm going to try to weave that into a, a book form, a study with several people. And uh, let's see what happens. I'd like to finish it before, well, I'd like to finish it. So I'm probably going to get off social media for a while. I mean, we pretty much know what's coming. For those of you that have listened to me for a while, uh, they're going to try to crash the economy, bring us into a digital cashless thing, 666, which majority of people going to church absolutely convinced they're not going to be here for this well they're absolutely convinced that they are not deceived but they are deceived and uh yeah it'll be interesting so we'll see what happens and i'm going to uh well let's let's get going with the bible study so i don't know i i just don't see myself much on social media much anymore it's it's getting the point it's a waste of time i go to gab post something it's the same 20 people that see me same 20 people always i got 600 subscribers and i i same 20 people yeah so whatever all righty let's get going here all right, let's turn our King James Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul. And uh, you got to realize, Paul was writing to those that lived in the city-state of Corinth, a city in Greece. And this is what he wrote, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's right. All the wisdom of this world is worth nothing, unless you know Jesus Christ and him crucified. Verse 3. And I was with you in weakness, and in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. you got to realize something. Paul was able to do miracles. He even raised somebody from the dead. I mean... But the thing is, in the end times, the false prophet 
of the Antichrist beast, the man of sin, sin of perdition, is also going to be able to do miracles, just like the magicians of Egypt were able to do with Moses and Aaron. They were able to mimic some of the miracles that Moses did under the leadership of the Lord. So, people are going to have to make a choice. Who are you going to follow? Who are you going to serve? Verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Now, the Greeks were uh, real big into philosophy. The wisdom of men. That was their thing. Philosophy. You've heard of Aristotle, Plato. They were Greek philosophers. But did they have the power of God? Did they have Christ crucified? Verse 6. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Naught means nothing. They come to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom. Hidden wisdom. Did you know that God's wisdom was hidden? Oh, yeah. For a while, anyways. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Did you know God ordained all these things before the world? Yeah. God is sovereign. Listen to this. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. Now we're talking about the the princes of the power of the air, the, the fallen angels, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If Satan would have figured out and known that by crucifying Christ, that mankind could have been redeemed from the curse of sin and death, he wouldn't have done it. He would not have done it. I mean, think about it. But he didn't know. He thought he was gaining a great victory. Oh yeah, Jesus, God in the flesh, come to the earth. The Christ. Let's kill him. We'll get rid of him. They thought. Well, they thought wrong. Their loss is our gain. In Revelation 13, 8, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, the Antichrist, whose names are not written, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. See, Jesus was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. From the, from the time that the Lord created the earth, he was destined to die for the sins of of mankind. Think about it. All right, let's go back to Corinthians. Let's go read verse 7 and 8 again. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Wow. What has God prepared for those that love him? A whole bunch. I mean, you know, face it, streets 
streets of gold, mansions. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. You read the modern Bible versions, they'll say, oh, it's an apartment building. You know, those little cramped little apartments like they have in Japan. You know, it's like, it's like a, basically a walk-in closet. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I'm going to stick with the King James. You know, mansions. Verse 10, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man? Save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. See, that's why the unsaved think the Bible is foolishness. They don't understand it. And they can't. In James chapter 1, it says, If any of you lack understanding, let him ask of God. You know, you get on your hands and knees, ask the Lord for understanding, and start reading his word. He'll give it to you. When you seek the Lord and, and, and want him with all your heart, you're going to find him. Absolutely. In Jeremiah chapter 29, 13. And ye shall seek me. You know, you're going to look for me. And ye shall seek me and find me. So you're going to look for him and find him. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. When you look for the Lord hard enough, you'll find him. He'll find you. All right, let's go back to Corinthians. Verse 11. 1 Corinthians 2.11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Listen to this. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. See, the natural man, the man in the flesh, they can't receive the things of the Spirit of God. They can't do it. It's foolishness to them. They can't know it because they're spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. See, those that are in the Spirit and walk by the Spirit, they're not going to be judged by any man. Not, not things pertaining to the Lord. The Lord will judge, but not for wickedness, but rather for your place in the kingdom. There was a thing in the Bible where uh, those that were given the talents, one guy was given charge of one city, another guy was given charge of five cities, another was given charge of ten cities. There's going to be levels of responsibility. And those that are faithful in the little things will be trusted with the big things. You know, that they what do they say? The devil's in the details? No, the devil's not in the details. That's what the world says, the devil's in the details. But, uh, yeah. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? Hmm. You think you know more than the Lord? 
<laughs> Not me, buddy. Uh-uh. But we have the mind of Christ. And there you go, Paul. And you know what, P I, I, I just I hear people say, oh, Paul's a false apostle. I want to strangle him. I really do. So, but what can I tell you? All right, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Now, what's a steward? You ever heard of a steward on a, like a cruise ship? It's somebody that serves you. You know, you don't know where your cabin is or you need somebody to, show you where to get coffee or whatever you know where's the uh dining area oh i need some towels you know fresh towels so the apostles were stewards of the mysteries of god moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful we don't have very many of them, do we? No. You know, just turn on TBN and you'll see a bunch of... Yeah. Verse 3. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. Or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified... But he that judgeth me is the Lord. That's right. People that judge Paul. Tuh. You know what? The Lord's going to judge Paul. Not you. Not me. Not all the devils that tell you he's a fake either. Verse 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time. Until the Lord come. Who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness oh yeah all the wicked people their their things of darkness will come to light and i'll tell you what people that knew me in high school boy i'll tell you what there's uh they would never they would never have believed i'd be doing bible studies never probably never I mean, I wasn't horrible bad. I mean, I wasn't a hitman for the mafia, but uh, yeah, it's just people wouldn't believe it. <laughs> oh, well. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make the manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. And those are those in Christ, by the way, in case you don't know it. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes. That ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive. Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? See, some of us, the Lord gives physical prowess, you know. Others, some people are good at math. Other people are good with language. I'm not one of the math people, but yeah. And if you're good at something, was it not the Lord that gave it to you that way? You know? I mean, everybody's got a... Every believer, true believer, has a spiritual gift. And there's a good book on that called uh, Discovering Your God-Given Gift. Uh, I think it's Don and Katie Fortune. Some people are evangelists. I'm a teacher. Others are helps others are geared for government 
you know, it's just the way it is. If you're good at something, that's great. But it's God that gave you the gifts. So, you know, why glory for yourself or somebody else? So, all right, verse 8. Now ye are full, now ye are rich. Ye have reigned as kings without us. And I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. For I think that God hath set forth us, the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. As it were appointed to death? Yeah. Guess how many apostles died for their faith? Well, of the original 12, including Judas Iscariot, 10 of them. I mean, Judas hung himself, yeah. But did you know that 10 of the 12 apostles died for their faith? The only apostle that didn't die for his faith was John, uh, who wrote the book of Revelation. He's the only one. He, he, according to the best of my knowledge, anyways. Paul died for his faith, too. Yeah. So, yeah. For I think that God has sent forth had set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to the and to angels and to men. Yeah, they were made a spectacle. They were made uh, a show. You know, Herod killed uh, one of the apostles. I forget which one, and he made a show out of it. Yeah. So, you know, spectacle unto the world. Spectacle is like a, a show. Verse 10. We are fools for Christ's sake. Yeah. To the world we are fools for Christ's sake. But ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Aren't Christians despised? Oh, yeah. Even under this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. Tell that to the pre-trib rapture crowd. Huh. You know why they had no certain dwelling place? Because they, they took their properties away. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled... We bless being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of this world. Christians are made the filth of this world and are the off-scouring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. I warn you. Paul warned the people. Verse 15, for though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, I think this is a figure of speech, yet have ye not many fathers, you know, fathers in the faith. And no, I'm not talking about a Catholic priest. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. See, spiritually, Paul was a father to these people that it, he had begotten them through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, be followers of me. Yeah, follow Paul as he leads you to Christ. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, Timotheus, Timothy, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. Uh, Timothy, you know, you can read the, the book of Timothy. Timothy was young, but he had known 
of the Bible from a very young age because of his mother and grandmother. And a lot of people didn't like that he was so young. Oh, we can't have, you know, we can't have a pastor that's half my age. What does he know? Hey, he was instructed by Paul personally. I think I would have listened to P Timothy, even though I was probably two or three times his age. I don't know. Yeah, I'm an old guy. When you're collecting Social Security, you ain't no youngster. <laughs> 18. Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly if the Lord will and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What will ye? Shall I come to you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness? Oh, yeah. In Revelation chapter 2, Jesus speaking, Revelation chapter 17, well, chapter 2, verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. Hidden manna. What did uh, the Lord feed Israel in the wilderness when they left Egypt? You know, you're out in the middle of a desert. You're not going to find a peach tree or an apple tree or a fig tree or an olive tree. No, there ain't nothing there. Sand. So God gave them manna from heaven. And basically manna meant, what is this stuff? What is this? And if you don't know that story, you should read it. The book of Exodus. Matter of fact, the Bible starts in Genesis, people. Yeah. Do you realize that if you read three chapters in the Bible every single day without fail, you could go through the entire Bible in one year? Think about it. Think about it. It's not that hard. Turn off your TV for 30 minutes. I would tell people, but to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. So those that are in Christ that overcome are going to eat the hidden, the hidden bread, and they're going to get a new name. That nobody knows. So, let's take a look. All right, let's see, read some words of Jesus. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 20. Then began he, Jesus, to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. You know, Christ went to these cities. He did miracles. And he taught them to repent, but they wouldn't repent. They wouldn't turn away from their evil, wicked ways. No. Sounds exactly like the USA and the U EU and the UK today. Verse 21. Woe unto thee, Chorazin, Woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained unto this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. 
At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid, thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Why is Jesus talking about little babes? Babes, you know. I think Matthew 19 and verse 13 holds the answer. Then were brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer or allow. Suffer little children. Suffer or allow little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. See, we are supposed to be like little children. Little children will trust their parents and learn from them. And that's what God the Father is, right? We're supposed to be like little children. We're not supposed to go there and say, oh God, you're doing it all wrong. You know, some people say that's why God created Adam first and then instead of Eve, right? So, you're doing it all wrong, God, would Eve said. No. I know, poor attempt at a joke. I won't be going to the Oscars, I'll tell you that. Uh, Yeah. So, we're supposed to be like little children for the, chil for the kingdom. Chapter 11, Matthew, verse 25. I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent. Those that were wise in their own eyes, God hid the things, hid from them, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son, but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. Learn of Jesus. Take Christ's burden on you. What was Christ's burden? The cross. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. Oh, yeah. How hard is it to uh, believe in Jesus and, and keep his two commandments, love the Lord and love thy neighbor? Well, not the enemies of the Lord. We aren't supposed to love the enemies of the Lord. Some people tell you the Lord doesn't have enemies, but the Bible teaches otherwise. Yeah. So. All right, let's go to Matthew 25 and verse 14. This I covered this a little bit in another earlier little earlier so Jesus speaking for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country hmm yeah heaven is as far away from the earth as yeah you know far country uh, as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto him his goods the gospel right God calls his servants and delivers unto him the gospel. And unto one he gave five talents. A talent was kind of like a, I think it was a measurement of money, right? So he gave one guy five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability. See, God doesn't give us more than we can, uh, our ability. And straightway took his journey. So Jesus gives you what you need. And he took his journey. Going to heaven, right? 
Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that received two, he also gained other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. You know, reckoning, give an account. Where's this? What are the things that I gave you? What did you do with them? And so he that received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Yeah, you gave me this, but I worked for you and gained double. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I hope to hear those words one day. Speaking to me, of course. I would love to. We'll see. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler. I will make thee ruler over many things. Oh, yeah. You've been faithful over a little. I'm going to make you ruler over a lot of things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Those are some other words I'd love to hear. Speaking to me, of course. But uh, Verse 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strong. See, the Lord didn't preach the gospel to everybody. There was a time when he was on the earth, he preached. And he taught the apostles, and it was the apostles' jobs to go out and teach other people, and then their job, the other people, to teach other people. But did the Lord preach to every single individual throughout history? No. So he, the Lord's reaping the harvest where he didn't sow, and he's going to gather the people where he didn't, you know, it says strawed, but, you know. He didn't sow and he's not reaping. That is the job. Actually, it's the reaping is the job of the angels. If you read the parable of the wheat and the tares. So he says, well, yep, I know you're a hard man. And you're going to reap where you haven't sown. And gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid. Wow, the Lord gave him something and he was afraid. And went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast what is thine. Wow. He was afraid and did nothing with what the Lord had given him. Nothing. He says, okay, you gave me this, I'm giving it back to you. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Slothful, lazy. Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. See, usury is forbidden in the Bible. You'd never know it the way things are today. But, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, uh, let me tell you something. When you buy a house and you got a mortgage, you don't own that house. The bank does. You don't make the payments, bank gets it back. If there's a depression or crash, bank gets it back. You got a car, more uh, car payments, you don't pay, it's the bank's. 
when the bank wants to shut the car off electronically, what are you going to do? It's the bank's car. It's not yours. You know? Think about it. There's a reason why the Lord says, uh, do owe man nothing but love. Yeah. So, thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels, holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Boy, there's going to be a lot of goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. You know, think about this for a minute. What is the symbol of the church of Satan? The goat. The Baphomet, right? Goat's head. The From the waist down, it's a goat. Yeah. I mean, they revel in that. Don't they? They do. And why are the goats on the left? Isn't socialism and communism the left? They always call them, oh, that's the left. And then they call the other people, well, that, they're, on, they're right wingers. And they call you a right-winger like that's a bad thing. Yeah. Well, as far as the world's concerned, uh, right-wing, left-wing, it's all part of the same bird. But, uh, yeah. But when you get to the sheep and the goat, the sheep on the right and the goats on the left, well. And, oh, by the way, uh, the reason they call them the left, it goes to, uh, it goes back to France. During the French Revolution, they used to call themselves the Jacobins, the sons of Jacob, you know, Jacob Israel. Yeah, the um, Revelation uh, chapter 2, and uh, then there's another of the verse 9, peak crowd. Yeah. Well, they used to sit on the left, and that's why they called them the left, because they're left. So, yeah. And he, saw, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, this is what we want to hear, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. See, from the very beginning, all this was set up. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. Well, if you listen to the, the, the Klaus Schwab crowd, For I was hungered, and ye gave me bugs to eat. Yeah. No thank you. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee, sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. And if you really want to read more about this, 
read the second chapter of the book of James. I mean, it, he basically says the same thing. And you know what? You know, you know who James grew up with? James grew up with a guy named Jesus because he had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph. I have a feeling James knew a couple things, but, you know. Verse 41. Then shall he also say unto them on the left hand, Oh yeah, the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. See, hell was created for the devil and his angels. We were never intended to go to hell. It just, you know, it wasn't there. For I was in hunger, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I, I bet you if you went to uh, Franklin Graham's house and said, well, if, if you could get past his bodyguards and his gated fence and his gated community, and said, I haven't eaten in a week, could you have get me a sandwich? Get out of here, you bum. I'll guarantee you. Um, we're calling the police. You know, you're trespassing. We'll, we'll see if I'm right or not one day. For I wasn't hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they answer him, saying, Lord... When saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not, ye did it not, to one of the least of these ye did it not to me, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. You know, there's a reason. All these Tele-evangelists with their mansions. No way. There's, they would never do anything for anybody. When uh, Benny Hinn's, I think Benny Hinn's church was, uh, I forget what it was exactly. I think it was Houston. Maybe it was Houston. During the hurricane, Benny Hinn told his people to lock the church. Don't let anybody in. You know, his flock had their houses destroyed or whatever. I forget what hurricane. But he, he locked the church and had guards there. Wouldn't let anybody know. No, no, we don't want you people. The unwashed masses. We don't want you messing up our church. His church. I mean really yeah, he caught a little bit of flack over it you know but how short people's memories are and they flock to his church and send him checks because you know god's gonna bless you a hundred times if you send me a tithe well send god your tithe but here's our address yeah read james chapter two on your own read it same thing All right, let's go to Luke chapter 10 and verse 16. Jesus speaking. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. You know, God the Father. That's why the Bible said that uh, if you have Christ, you know, you got the Father also. I'm paraphrasing, but. And you know what? Those that deny Paul, if Paul was sent of the Lord Jesus Christ and you reject Paul, you're rejecting Jesus. And if you reject Jesus, you're rejecting God the Father. That's a dangerous way to be. Now, in verse 17, uh, they had put together 70 people. And sent them out. 
and if I remember correctly, 70 was the, uh, uh, 70 consisted of the Sanhedrin. Well, this was God's Sanhedrin. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. See, these 70 people were casting out de uh, demons or devils or whatever you want to call them. Casting them out of people. I wonder how many people are in a mental institution that are actually possessed of devils and need deliverance. I wonder how many. And he, Jesus, said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Hmm. Uh... So who was the god of lightning in mythology? Well, you ever heard of Zeus? How about Odin? And what was Odin's son? Thor, the god of thunder. Doesn't thunder always follow lightning? Seems to. Yeah, but I'm sure, you know, uh, Thor and Zeus are just... Uh, just coincidences, right? Oh, yeah. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Jesus speaking, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Mm. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned unto his disciples and said private, pri privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Oh, yeah. King David didn't get to see the, these things. I'm sure he would have loved to. How about 2 Corinthians chapter 4? Paul again. Verse 1, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, yeah, all those that are in Christ have received mercy. As we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things, the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, unlike TBN, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Listen to this. But if our gospel be hid, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servant, servants for Christ Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 
How can anybody read this and, and, and not believe Paul is an apostle? Oh, wait, that's right. If, if God doesn't give it to them, they're, they're blinded. Verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, our bodies, right? That the excellency of the power of that the power of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. Yeah. The flesh is dying, but the soul and spirit are alive. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many re redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish, yet the inner, inner man is renewed day by day. Yeah, our outward flesh will perish, but the inward man, the spirit man, is renewed day by day. For our light affliction which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You know, the suffering in this world will seem like nothing when you see what's in the world to come. Believe that. In Romans 8.18, Paul writes, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. All right, 2 Corinthians 4, uh, 15. For all things are for your sake, sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal, forever, right? All right, let's read Ephesians chapter 3. There was a city in Greece called Ephesus, and they spoke Greek. Verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me to you word, Dispensation. What does that word mean? It means to give something, to dispense. You ever heard of a soap dispenser? Well, that's the root word where dispensation comes from. Guess what? There's two dispensations. Moses was dispensed the law. Christ dispensed grace. Of course, you go to a Baptist church and they'll tell you, oh, it's periods of time. God's giving us periods of time? Really? Well, it's kind of, you could argue that, but I don't think so. Paul said it was the dispensation of the grace of God, not a period of time. The old covenant, the new covenant. Dispensations. New Testament, Old Testament. New Covenant, Old Test Covenant, right? New and Old Covenants. 
There's two dispensations, law and grace. And if you want to believe your Schofield Bible, go for it. Personally, I had a Schofield Bible and I threw it in the garbage because that's where it belongs. Well, maybe not the words of the Bible, but, but Schofield's notes, yeah, absolutely belongs in the garbage. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he hath made known unto me the mystery, the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages, times past, was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles, holy apostles, and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel. Now, how's that work? Uh, Jeremiah 3 and verse 8, God divorced Israel. Jeremiah 31, 31, God said he'd remarry Israel. And when you read this, this is the Gentiles he's talking about. You know, God's not up in his up in heaven biting his fingernails, going, Oh, I gave the gospel to the Israel and and they didn't want me, so now I'm gonna have to go elsewhere and find some people that love me. No. The people of the New Testament are the same people of the Old Testament. Read the book of Hosea sometime. Read Jeremiah 3 8 and 31 31. Read it. Don't take my word for it. Which in other ages have not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace giving that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable, the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid, hath been hid, the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Beware, people. There's the Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, and uh, you got to watch these people. The Bible says that God created all things. The Bible says that Jesus Christ created all things. If A equals B and B equals C, that means A and C are equal. If God created all things and Jesus created all things, that means Jesus is God in the flesh. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid, hid, hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places, when you read, when you read powers and principalities, you're generally talking about angels. In heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he have purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love might be able to uh, comprehend with all saints 
what is the breadth and length and depth and height huh what may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height uh do you know paul is saying there's four dimensions here think about it look them up now i'm not sure what the greek words are the king james translator sure did but there's breadth length depth and height four dimensions wait a minute i've always been taught uh three dimensions you know length width length width height paul says there's four now some people will tell you the fourth dimension is time others will say it's the spiritual realm which is i'm kind of leaning towards the spiritual realm uh somebody believes a little something a little different Hey, that's on them. I mean, I don't claim to be a scholar. No way. I mean, if Jesus didn't even know what day he's coming back, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things I'm not going to know. So there's four dimensions mentioned here. Four. And to know the love of Christ, the love of Christ which passeth, passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power which worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church of Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. All right, I guess this is going to be the end of part three, and I guess there's going to be a part four. I thought I would finish this, but eh. Every time I think I'm going to be able to get done quick, uh, I end up being too long-winded, I guess. But some of you like it, some of you don't. What can I tell you? All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.